Good morning, everybody. Today we're back down on the water again. On a job site we worked on about a year ago, we got a bunch of these outside pads to do. There's one over there. This one back here we're starting with is a little bit bigger. We've got five of them in all, but nothing too crazy. So we'll get going, start on this one right here. There you go, just right. Look at that. Oh! Oh, make it wet and Let me know when you're ready to proceed. Ready to take a look? It's going to be a little wetter than usual because you're going to walk the water right through it. Ah, I didn't even touch it. Coming out of the hole. Everybody, so my part with this job here was well, I'm working as a sub for the foundation contractor. And the foundation contractor was hired by the builder who's the GC on the job. Now our part was we come in, we put up the forms, we tie the matter rebar, pour it, finish it. And the builder was, he's the one that put in the styrofoam. And they're the one that specced, you know, what we're pouring here. Six inch slabs, 12 inch thick edges. And the, the concrete mix was kind of left up to us. We, we have the same mix for all our, our exterior pours here in Maine. Basically, it's a 4,000 PSI with air. And then we put some water reducer in it. It's got fiber mesh in it. And that's a pretty strong mix. It's a good exterior mix that sees a lot of freeze and thaw. The challenge here was we got five of these pads to do. The concrete's warm. It's still pretty cold out this time of year. It's in April. So... Concrete's uh, pretty warm and it's on styrofoam, which actually makes the concrete set quick too. So, that you know, the key is knowing that we got to get back and finish all these. And there's a lot of handwork with these, is we got to get these down and poured as quick as possible. And with this first one, this was like 50 feet long by, I think it was around 10 feet wide, nine or 10 feet wide. The access was tough on this. Uh, when, when you ever, you hook that 16 foot chute on, and you know you don't want to get the concrete too loose because it is an exterior patio it's got some slope to it and the stuff just doesn't want to run down that 16 foot chute if it's too stiff you can see Luke pulling it right there like it's not that's not our uh, looser floor mix we use that's our more of our exterior concrete patio type mix so we're getting it down though, you know, when once we get it down to here, we, we can start jumping on that next one, which is right up there in the sunroom. Uh, but what we're, what I know, what I can tell already is when I'm bow floating this, I can feel it setting up under the bow float. So I know that I'm not going to have much time before I need to come back because we got to cut joints in this by hand. we got to edge it. i got to mag it out all by hand, put a broom finish on it. So there's, there's a lot of detailed work just in getting the finish on this one pad itself. These outside pads under the overhangs all get broom finished today. This, this sunroom here, this is going to be like a screened in porch. This is going to be a smooth trial finish. And then we'll just leave it. Then I don't know what they're going to do over that afterwards. They might polish it. It's a little bit. Hey, Luke, it is a little bit below that door sill, maybe a half inch. So the builder didn't know exactly what the homeowner wanted for a finish on this floor so he just said you know make it smooth that way if they do want it polished as the finished floor then the guy that come in and polish it can grind it easy enough those things with the yellow caps on them down there on the left are those are outlets in the floor basically we just they're, they're always sticking up high they cut them off flush afterwards and we you know we pour around them just make sure we don't knock them around any the wire mesh is in there just, just as a secondary reinforcement, really. I mean, we're cranking up on it as much as we can. The, this floor in here is, you know, around three and a half to four inches thick. We're matching the top of the concrete wall. Sometimes, I don't know, the builders like to put the PT sills on before we pour for whatever reason. I don't know. It doesn't help us any. It makes our job harder, actually. <laughs> that way we can't, now we can't run the screed over the top of the wall if we want to. But for whatever reason it uh, seems like a lot of builders around here they want to get those PT sills on just as soon as possible and get them bolted down so anyway we make it work we're used to it we're kick screeding this stuff now this stuff's this stuff's going down hard with the bow float too it's taking me uh, multiple passes to make it smooth the way we want to get it now 
we're going to want to get rid of that first truck. This is the end. This is the beginning of the second truck. Now he's been mixing and mixing and mixing. You know, we tell him what we want for a slump. And what we like is when the concrete driver gets the right slump on the first time and not have to keep adding water to get it up to what we want, even though we got water reducer in it. So Darren and Luke are going to finish up with that pad. I've already got to go back on this one and get my joints cut in. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to cut them in early um, with this joint tool right here. I'll have to get on it by hand and cut them in. So I got, a, I got my spacing measured out. I usually just put a mark in the concrete with my finger where I want my spacing. And then I can move my straight edge. I use the same screed we used to rod the concrete with as my kind of like my straight edge for this joining tool. And if you cut these in at the right time, they go in really fast, really quick and easy. So they always, I was just about right here. I probably could have been a little bit earlier. Um, but it, they, they all went in pretty fast still. And Darren and Luca just finishing up on that little piece. Now that stuff, when I went back to mag that right behind Darren, that was really firm. And then when I grabbed the bow float and tried bow float in this last little piece, you know, I could, I'm really barely getting it smooth, but what we know from experience is because it's still, the air is still so chilly, even though the concrete's setting up, once we get it down to this point, the set is gonna start slowing down a lot because the air temperatures are really cold. They're only in the 40s. All right, it won't be long today before I gotta get back on that and mag it and broom it. Uh, 4,000 PSI, we got warm water in the mix, plus we added some accelerator. You know, I'm not sure why when they did the foundation, why they just didn't put the concrete walls, you know, here. Let and just let them leave them down and then we form up around the concrete walls instead of like putting this entryway on a slab, the back patio on a slab and the other two pieces you'll see are kind of on slabs like this connected to the house. It would have been just as easy. Actually, it probably would have been easier just to put a concrete foundation. It might have been, I don't know. I doubt they were afterthoughts, but maybe they would have saved money. I mean, and then those those six by six posts. Now, then they'd be sitting on the the frost wall, and not on the slab. So, anyway, it was just a thought as we were doing these. Is what I was thinking. Now what I know right now is like if I had to jump back and leave just Darren and Luke, like they could get this one poured. Uh, there's another one on the garage they got to get poured. It's a little bit smaller than this. And there's one out behind this house that's got to get poured. Probably about the same size. So I could jump back and start the finishing process. And these two guys could handle these last three pads easy enough. But I'm going to hang around as long as I possibly can to get these done as fast as possible. And then... I'm going to wait till the last minute before I get back. That way, if uh, if both the, the two first pads start to set up, you know, both me and Darren can go back and Luke can finish now the last two if he has to because they're not very big. First pad's ready to start finishing, so Darren and Luke will finish up those two last pads pouring them. There's one over there. I'm going to jump on this one over here and start finishing. A lot of leaves and pine needles and everything being blown all over the place today, so I'm going to do my best to get a good finish on it. Alright, so my plan of attack here was, okay, let's get my, make sure I get my edge in. If I don't get that edge in now, <laughs> I'm probably not going to get it in. And then I'm going to jump right on my skids. I got, you know, because I got... I think three joints in this pad so I'm gonna do one square at a time I'm gonna get it I'm gonna get it mag floated out because the the leaves and uh, those little helicopter things are blowing all over the place I'm gonna I'm gonna blow off one square get it magged out get it broomed move over to the next one and that's the process as I'm going through this 
I figure if I can just get one done at a time without anything falling on it and having to keep blowing stuff off it, then, uh, you know, I'll just knock these out. And if I don't need one of the guys to come back and help me, that's just a big bonus. So I got, I got my skids on. I got two mag floats I'm using. Got the, my broom right there on a handle, and I'll leave my little DeWalt blower battery operated blower right handy in case I do need to blow something out of the way but that's the basic process you know I think that was about nine feet I had to go right there by 40 something here and that stuff it was it was a little windier today than what it looks on the video I'm just touching up my joints now with a hand joiner making sure they all look really nice and clean as I go I'm not going to leave the like the finished joint mark, but I will leave a finished edger mark when I get, get done with this. One thing about using 4000, one pretty good thing about it is, you know, there's quite a bit of cement in it. So when you do have to finish the surface by hand like this, it's usually a pretty creamy finish, a creamy, uh, creamy uh, concrete to finish. Usually you can work up a paste pretty good. Now if, if these pads did get too hard, let's say they set up really fast on us, like faster than what we expected. We do have power trials with us. So we always carry power trials, at least two with us. So, I mean, it wouldn't, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt this to throw a power trial on it. It would just, it's actually just kind of what we think is like it's a little bit more work because now the power trial is gonna probably mess up my joints a little bit and I'll have to fix them and then just the fact of having to drag it out of the truck, get it on the concrete, and move it from one slab to the other would be kind of a pain. So that's one reason why, like when we get on this by hand, we're going to hustle and do whatever we can just to keep finishing it by hand and not let the concrete get ahead of us. So far, this is going pretty good, though. I'm, I'm being able to keep up with this. As you can see, Darren had to jump on that upper one up there because... That one just wasn't going to wait, and Luke's finishing up whatever porn we need to do. I know one thing, I'm glad I had that little blower with me, otherwise I'd be trying to probably broom all that stuff off, and that just would have made a mess. And having the skids too, that really speeds things up, versus like using styrofoam for pads under yourself. That's, I went, before I knew about those skids, I used to use styrofoam, you know, like a two foot piece under my knees and another one under my feet. And I thought I could move pretty fast on them until I got those skids. Those skids are like five times faster using those than it is styrofoam or like a, some type of wooden knee board that I see a lot of people still use. That broomed out pretty good right there. Now I just gotta get my edge cut in. Then I can either jump on the third pad or I can go back and help Luke depending on how fast that third one's setting up. So Darren's got that pretty much under control. This one here, it's ready. I mean, it's actually too firm to cut in the joints with the, with the other tool I use first. So I gotta cut them in by hand with the hand joiner because I can put a lot more down pressure on that and I gotta you know, basically when you're cutting a joint in like this is you're, you're moving the aggregate out of the way. You're pushing it sideways and down. So if the concrete's too firm, there's just no way you're going to use, use one of those early ones with a handle. you gotta, you got to force them down by hand. <laughs> there's actually a lot of detail to these little pads. You know, especially even mag floating. you got to mag float. you got to make sure everything's filled in really nice, especially up against the edges, around the joints. Um, you don't want to mess up your, your edge if you've already done your edging and rounded your edges off. You don't want to flatten them back out. One good thing about broom finishes is once you've got that broom, you know that it's done. You don't have to go back over it versus like hand troweling something. A lot of times when you hand trowel something smooth, you got to go over it multiple times like we'll have to go over that pad that Darren was doing. All right, this is broom number two. Now let's go to broom number three. And we got broom number four out back. 
and then the screen ports we're going to smooth trial finish. Whew, looking good. Definitely firming up on us pretty quick. It's a little firmer than I like to cut these joints in. Ah. We'll get them. Tamp it to knock the rocks in. There we go. Pad number three down. Let's go get number four. Darren's putting a hand trial on this one. We gotta hand trial this two or three times, get it nice and smooth. Uh, that's coming along pretty good. Let's go out back, get the last boom finish pad. Been non stop. I didn't take my boots off yet. <laughs> Stuff setting up really good today. So, what we got out here just a little storage pad. Looks like to me. Just gonna cut one groove in the middle, then we'll broom it like we normally do. Yeah, so this stuff was setting up pretty good too. I had to join it in by hand. And even though that that screed or that straight edge looks a little crooked, it's just the angle of the camera. That was right straight in the middle. And then I cut another little joint all, way off to the right, right there off that re-entrant corner in the concrete wall because I know it was going to crack off that if I didn't put something there too. And then you know, Luke obviously Luke had got done pouring because this was the last slab we poured, so he could jump right back and help me get this magged out. Which, by this time, my wrist was a little sore, so <laughs> that was nice to have him mag that whole other square. And then Darren got done troweling over there, but we still have to hit that at least one more time to make it really smooth. So, But he could jump back and get the broom. So everything's kind of working out pretty good as far as how it all set up today. We got kind of lucky that way. All right, there's our four broom finish, finish pads done. It ain't even noon time yet. Now we just got to finish this up. I'm going to hand trial it. I'll go around and do the edges there if you want. Alright, well that does it for that. We're all done.
come back tomorrow we'll saw a couple of joints across that smooth one but the rest of them are done I'll just have to come back strip the forms is that little one that stuff dried fast today it's only it was 42 degrees when we left I don't know what it is now it must be in the 50s but it's still kind of chilly concrete that did have warm water in it though then we put a little bit of accelerator in it so anyway thanks for watching we'll see you on the next one